This is a true story about three strangers picked from Chuck's classroom and have their lives taped. Find out what happens when people stop being polite and start getting real. The Real World, coming to America. Why did you move to the United States? I moved to the United States because I want to get the bachelor's degree in here and I want to experience American life. Yeah, and also, of course, learn English. Yes. Yeah. Did you guys go through a culture shock? I think yes, one time when I talked to my host family, I go to drink tea with my friends and then my host family doesn't understand what I mean. And finally, I discovered instead of saying going to drink tea, I should say go to dim sum. I feel cultural stuff because dim sum in my hometown, it means the thing that we eat instead of the place that we go. So yeah. I feel this the cultural shock. Just the presentation we, uh, yesterday we yes. learned. <laughs> and uh, for me, my cultural shock is not very obvious uh, because I think uh, in our country, you know, City, Macau, uh, we has already um, have some experience about his some concept about American culture, so it's not really a big deal for us. Uh, my name is Natasha. I was born in Seattle, Washington, and when I was eight months old, I moved back to. Delhi, India with my grandparents. And when I was seven years old, I moved back to the United States, Seattle, Washington, to be specific, and started living with my parents since then and have been. Um, my, my parents, excuse me, my parents moved me to India when I was eight months old for two reasons. One was um, financial instability and the second reason was that they wanted me to be raised with the Indian culture and Indian traditions that they felt was right for me to be raised with. Was it, how long have you been in the United States? Eleven years. Eleven years. Um, was it a difficult transition for you? It was indeed a difficult transition because I had to deal, deal with teasing from other students in my class as well as learning a foreign language and fearing incorrect pronunciation in front of others. And um, I feel that being having brown skin made me feel more segregated from other classmates as well. Culture shock was extreme when I, culture shock started when I stepped off, off the airport, stepped out of the airport. And um, when I first saw people reuniting with loved ones in an affectionate manner, that was just like, whoa, they're kissing outside. So it was, it was indeed a shock. And um, also turning on the TV for the first time was a bit shocking when I turned to channels like MTV and VH1 because they were they were so open to sexuality and that was just and that was an extreme taboo where I came from and um, seeing women dressed in in a revealing manner didn't seem to shock or embarrass anybody in the room which which was really strange to which was really strange to see. Um, do your parents culture shock and value have a significant impact on your upbringing? It does because they grew up in a collectivistic culture and I'm growing up in an individual cu individualistic culture. Um, the culture in which they grew up in, it was taboo to stay out late 
and for teens growing up here, that could be a difficult reality to grow up with. Um, also, having sleepovers at friends' houses and stuff like that isn't isn't allowed, and um, being a female and wanting to move out is a shock to my parents as well. And um, being a student, I want to move out for college, hopefully out of state, and um, that's that I know is something I'm going to have to fight for. So. What impact has it? has your parents' culture have on your social life? Uh, growing up with my parents' culture constantly being incorporated into my upbringing has had a severe impact on my social life because, stay, like I said, staying out late isn't allowed or it's something that I have to work around and having sleepovers with my friends is something that's, again, not allowed and for a teenage girl it's you know, it's a critical thing to do, and um, I personally have a boyfriend, which my parents do not know about, and we have been going out for about three years now, and so it's a long time to hide a relationship from your parents, but I know if I were to tell my parents, it wouldn't be something accepted, and being an Indian girl, growing up here with the cultures of her parents impacting her her upbringing is something that I have to deal with while still trying to live my life the same way I want to and basically not everything is all in the open between my parents and I and there are things that I have to hide but that is something that I know I will be better off with keeping to myself as well as my parents would be better off with by not knowing and there's a lot of things like that that I think both my parents and I have to deal with. When are you allowed to tell your parents about a boy? Um, Is there like a specific time? I think when I am in my mid-twenties I can tell them about him. Right now I'm 18 and so that's a long ways away. I think... So are you just going to say, well I've been dating this guy for 10 years now. <laughs> just to let you guys know. So we're going to get very down. No, um, I'm, the reason I would tell them when I'm in my mid-twenties is because that's usually a set age where it's time to get married, if I'm ready for marriage by then. And um, I think I, what I would start out by is um, mentioning, and my parents already know my boyfriend, but they know him as my friend's brother, so they don't, they don't watch them watch this video. Ah! <laughs> Get a scolding.